doing policy relevant research on various aspects of sustainable development. In particular, it has a long tradition of research on SSE, and it is the implementing agency of the knowledge hub of the UN Interagency Task Force on SSE or UNTF SSE. As the implementer of the knowledge hub, Ernest carried out mm -hmm. the UNTF SSE project entitled Opportunities and Challenges of Statistics on SSE. And we are going to present its first showcase of the produced papers. I'm very much proud to say that we have today the authors of these papers, uh, Good or Intellectual Avengers. Uh, we are with Marie Bouchard, full professor at University of, University of Quebec in Montreal, Canada, and CDEC chair of the Scientific Commission on the Social and Cooperative Economy. Marie, who also served as the external coordinator for this project, is going to talk about producing statistics on social and solidarity economy. And we have Jerome Schumacher, who is professor at the Oteco de la Ville de Lis, Belgium, and the project manager of Syriac. Jerome is going to talk about mapping international mapping exercises. And last but not least, we have Rafael Chavez, senior professor at the University of Valencia. Rafael is going to talk about policy recommendations and directions for future research. Before we move on to the presentations, I'd like to invite Vic Van Buren, director of the Enterprise Department of IRO. Vic is leading the SSE initiatives within the UN system as the chair of the UN TFSSE. Vic, over to you. Thank you, Thank you. and uh, yes, we have a, a, a small group and hopefully as people join, um, uh, we can have more people participating. Um, I'm very pleased to be part of this uh, eighth EMS or EMI's uh, International Research Conference and have the opportunity to spell out some of the work of, of what the UN task force is doing. But in the area that you, the experts are going to be talking, I would learn more than I would be able to um, present on. So mine is going to be just presenting the broad framework of some of the things that we've been doing. The UN Task Force on Social and Solidarity Economy aims to raise the visibility of the SSC within the UN system and beyond. And I'm, I'm a firm believer that we haven't been branding the SSC enough and we talk to each other about what's happening. And the time has come for us to brand the SSC much stronger. The members and observers of the task force have been committed to undertake collaborative activities to firstly enhance the recognition of the role of SSC enterprises and organizations in sustainable development, promoting the knowledge of SSC and consolidate networks, and support the establishment of an enabling institutional and policy environment. And lastly, we need to ensure the coordination of international efforts and create and strengthen partnerships. The task force is, is made up of 18 UN agencies and, uh, and, and, and the OECD. And of the civil society, we've got 14 organizations um, that represent research institutes and, and other uh, civil society organizations who act as observers, such as EMIS, uh, Syriac, Eurixe. And um, we have a rotational chair. So next year will be my time to move on and we'll find someone else to take over from me. We've got a plan of action and in Trento in 2019, we put together a strategic plan and we tried to keep it very focused so that we didn't try and do everything. And uh, we've got three priority objectives. The one is um, to try and support the governments who are looking to have a resolution on the social and solidarity economy. It's taking a bit of time as governments start lobbying with each other and, and, and getting this on, on track. But we would, we've been helping and advising with regards to the text of what could be in a UN uh, a, a General Assembly debate. Then on the SSE for SDGs, we've recognized that at government level, there, is a lot of, there are a lot of challenges in the um, developing economies. We don't have regulatory frameworks that are supportive of SSE. And this is often seen on the periphery. And we battle to get some substantive issues going. We've got to move from SSEs out of necessity to rather having SSEs of opportunity, where this is a driving force 
in line with the, the SDGs. And so we've developed a program which we're now discussing with the EU at the moment for funding, where we take the social and solidarity economy program to the uh, governments and help them implement and, and bring about a, um, a regulatory framework that will work. Then we've got the knowledge hub, and that's where Yilchong and Unrest have been key. This enhances the potential of the SSC uh, in, through a knowledge hub for SDGs. And this was set up by the government of South Korea and the Luxembourg government who gave us sponsorship where we, we drive this knowledge platform. Um, through the organizations of public events and the creation of an online platform, which is now available in four languages, it's been possible to favor the creation of knowledge around SSC and SDGs. And we also have every second year a conference where we call for papers. This is a good example of a pilot project driven by the task force and implemented by one of the UN agencies uh, through UNRIST. In this framework, we began a research project, Opportunities and Challenges of Statistics on SSE, funded by the Government of the Republic of Korea in 2019 and coordinated by UNRIST as the implementing agency. Um, the, also, the, uh, with the support of Syriac uh, International and its network, the project aimed to contribute to knowledge diffusion and transfer about robust methodologies and high quality approaches for data collection. The three papers on the SSE statistics which will be presented today have been developed in this framework and they aim at supporting stakeholders to deepen their understanding of the methodologies on SSE and policymakers and to establish and improve SSE statistical systems. This is so important as we go forward. Although policymakers increasingly pay attention to the SSE, organizations and enterprises in particular, um, their potential to address social, economic and environmental problems in, in alternative ways is there. But we lack statistical information about the weight, the size and the scope of the SSE OEs in their territory. And this often prevents them from establishing sustainable and inclusive policies for the development of SSE. The exchange among different countries is also very important. I'm coming to the end of my comments now. I don't want to hog the floor. But let me conclude uh, by adding that we identified some topics which were deemed essential to our approach to mainstreaming SSEs. And this is at the lo local dimension where we explored the lo localizing of the SDGs. And secondly, the area of education. We believe there's so much work that needs to be done there. My four sons who came through the schooling systems um, never knew anything about SSE when they came and went through college and university. And that's a huge question mark on the, the quality of our education systems in promoting the social and solidarity economy as a model that can address many of the global challenges that we currently have. And this is an area that we're going to be paying a lot more attention to is the education. It's encouraging to see that many students and researchers from different countries are interested in the subject. So I, I wish you well in this session and, and uh, Il Chong and all of you. And this is a very important component, even though there may be a small group. It's extremely key to debate these issues and see how we can take it forward, particularly in the task force. Thank you very much. And over to you, Il Chong. Thank you very much, Pic. Um, even though it is a small group, it is going to be recorded and published online. And the, you know a lot of people will watch your remark and uh, all our presentations. So without further ado, let's go for the first presentation. Marie, floor is yours. Thank you, Il Chang. Thank you, Vic, for your presentation. And um, because I am not uh, a Google fan, I have to ask Il Chang to uh, share my screen and maybe go on to the next slide, if possible. So. Thank you for introducing this uh, work and thank you for having us to present it today. As uh, mentioned by Il Chang and by Vic, this work uh, is a three-part work and we're going to present some aspects of it today. Uh, my role will be to present the state of the art or what we know about producing statistics of the SSC. Next slide, please. I did this work with Gabriel Sadetibouilleu, who unfortunately is not with us today, but he will be watching on the screen later on. Next slide, please. So um, yes, we need statistics on the SSE, but one of the issues is that we don't have 
a harmonized uh, data on the SSC. Some countries have uh, some data, some countries do not have, but moreover, we have different definitions uh, about the SSC. It's still um, a concept in in way of being um, clarified, uh, but really it's basically that different countries have different history and there's a progressive unfurling of the SSC that uh, makes it different in different countries. But there is interest in having a, a, a measurement of the SSC, the size, the scope, the breadth, the, the, but we don't have uh, the uh, exact framework to do it. So we need to, to, to test concepts and to, to uh, operationalize. I hear myself twice. Maybe, Jérôme, you can uh, cut your microphone. Thank you very much. Um, and different approaches exist, and this discussion today is about what approach should we adopt. Next slide, please. And Chong, next slide, please. Thank you. So the our report, which is available online, has seven parts. Um, and we are going to discuss today defining the SSC for producing statistics-related guidance to measure it and setting the perimeter of the SSC for statistical purpose. The rest of the report goes on to identifying the sources, um, looking at the classification and methodologies and indicators, but we will conclude this presentation with the strengths and weaknesses of approaches to SSC statistics and some recommendations. Next, please. Next, please. So if we look at different um, entities that are covered by legislation of uh, SSC in different uh, countries, we see that different types of entities can be included in the definition, the legal definition of the SSC. But in general, you have three types of entities that are always present, which are cooperatives, mutual societies, and nonprofit institutions or associations. The other aspects, the other entities uh, are not always covered, but if we want to have a, a common sense of what the SSC is and we look at the different national legislation, we usually have these three entities. Next. There are different frameworks for producing and harmonizing statistics on the SSC over the world. Uh, here in chronological order, we see that an important work has been done by the Johns Hopkins Institute and uh, Lester Salomon, which uh, unfortunately passed recently. Uh, our thoughts are with his family. Um, there, there has been two uh, major uh, work done in the 2003 uh, in 2006. In 2003, we have a handbook to produce statistics on the nonprofit institutions. And in 2006, we have a complementary manual to do the other part of the SSE, which are cooperatives and mutuals. In uh, 2017, the ILO um, produced a conceptual framework for statistics on cooperatives, which were which led to adopting guidelines concerning statistics on cooperatives in 2018. However, in 2018, as well, a new handbook was produced for produ producing uh, a satellite account of nonprofit institution and some related enterprises, uh, some cooperatives, but not all, and some mutuals, but not all, and some social private enterprise. So this is what we're going to discuss today. Next, please. If we look at what the 2003 handbook produced, it identified clearly how to spot and, and name uh, nonprofit institutions across the systems of national account, which is the standard that is used by st national statistic offices. Next. In 2006, next slide. Uh, there was one between. <laughs> um, it was when passed in 2006, anyhow, the um, Syriac Manual identified where are the cooperatives and mutual within the same uh, system of national account. Next slide. The 2018 ILO work identified type of cooperatives, types of cooperatives in which different typology of cooperatives can be included in order to organize the information about cooperatives across the world. Next. 
So at that time, we have nonprofit institutions plus co-op and manual, and we can cover social economy. Next. But then here comes the uh, TSC handbook, TSC for third sector or social economy. However, calling it social economy may be confusing because some but not all cooperatives and mutual societies are included in this framework. Some but not all for-profit non-collective social enterprises are included and are included some sectors that are traditionally excluded from the definition of the SSC, such as professional associations, political parties, worker unions, churches. So this handbook calls itself social economy, but covers a different spectrum. Next. Next slide, please. Previous slide, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so if we want to have a short picture of it, here are the different entities covered by different conceptual frameworks of the SSC, cooperatives, social economy, uh, which include and exclude some part of nonprofit associations and foundations, social enterprise, which is a subset of the social economy, but some are non-collective and are not always included in the social economy, Voluntary work outside of organizations, which is not always included in the definition of social economy. So what do we do with this? Next slide, please. An easy way is to use a modular approach. Why are we talking about a modular approach? Because it exists. It's been tested by, by uh, Portugal. The, uh, the satellite account of 2016, published in 2019, just said, our definition of social economy is not the TSC handbook only, and it's, it has to refer also to the Syriac manual. And so we'll combine, because we have in our social economy groups, uh, Holy Houses of Mercies, Foundation, Association with Altruistic Goals, and Cooperatives and Mutual Associations. Next slide, please. So there is a solution. So just to, to point out some strengths and weaknesses and maybe express some recommendations for future work. Next, please. So basically, there are two main visions of the SSC. Um, one is the nonprofit third sector. So it, it, the basic organization, a typical organization is a nonprofit organization. It, it wants to capture the volunteerism and philanthropy inside the economy. The other vision is the social economy vision. It, it includes associations, but also cooperatives and mutual societies and similar. Um, it uh, captures a different way from, of producing economy in a more solidaristic way. In general, the legal definitions that you have in different countries cover to various extent both visions and generally exclude non-economic, non-organized, and non-purpose, other than profit, non-purpose entities. Next slide, please. But the frameworks and statistics, for, for statistics on the SSC, if you look at the three uh, manuals or handbook that, that uh, or the four, including the ILO 2018 on cooperatives, um, we see that the two, uh, 2003, 2016, and 2018 ILO can be combined to grasp the various national contexts of the SSC. But if you use the TSC handbook, which is, I, I have to say, the most advanced handbook because it's a UN handbook and it, it's, it's quite appealing, and it's supposed to help progress in standardization, it instead generates a bit of confusion because it assimilates the SSC only to the nonprofit vision and also by including for-profit, which are owned and governed by, governed by non-user shareholders, uh, social enterprises, uh, it, it confuses the, the perimeter of the traditional social economy. And moreover, statistics of cooperatives were not integrated. The guidelines, uh, the ILO guidelines were not integrated in the TSC 2018. So it remains an unsolved issue. Next slide, please. Um, there's a problem in general of visibility of entities of the SSC in national statistics. 
they are present in uh, household surveys and establishment surveys, but you don't know which entities are of the social economy. We have to mobilize governments and sector and convince national statistics offices of the importance of identifying cooperatives and other SSE entities in national surveys. In terms of national compatibility plus international comparability, which sometimes can be in conflict, um, we most often need to combine frameworks, such as the modular approach adopted by Portugal. For measuring the contribution of the SSC, the standard economic indica indicators sometimes poorly measure the contribution of the SSC because the SSC is an alternative way of producing uh, wealth and economic goods and services. So we need to do more research and to test indicators that will adequately assess the socioeconomic contribution of the SSC, namely the SDGs. Next slide, please. So some future work that we can think of. First, if there is a next edition of the UN 2018 Third Sector Handbook for the NPI and related institutions, please either remove social economy from the title or include all cooperatives and mutual societies um, in order to respect the legal definitions of the SSE in many countries of the world. We need to validate and adapt the frameworks through feasibility studies and ongoing testing. And for this, national governments have to get involved. They need to, to ask their NSOs to uh, do this work. And there needs to be some coordination at the international level of these initiatives and between national, international statistical agencies and offices that do produce these standards so that we don't have conflicting uh, frameworks. And we need to clarify the concept of social enterprise uh, versus uh, any kind of corporate social responsibility. We need to clarify the concept for statistical purposes. And of course, further research for appropriate indicators of the social, economic and environmental contribution of the SSC. So next slide, please. You can download our <laughs> our papers on the uh, UN Task Force for the SSC uh, website. Um, and I leave the floor for my colleagues to talk about the other, the two other studies that we produce. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marie. Um, I hope the next edition of 2018 Handbook is going to be led by UN Statistics Division and UN Task Force, other than other institutions. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's go for uh, Jerome Schumacher. Yes, the I'm there. Presenter. Right. Perfect, thanks. I will try to share my screen. And uh, okay. okay, so do you see my slides? I hope. Uh, yes. And it, is it okay? You okay? Perfect. So hello everyone. Let's, so let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jean Skudmakers, and I'm um, project manager at CIRIEC, so the International Center of Research and Information on the Public, Social, and Cooperative Economy. I'm also a professor at uh, HEC Liège, uh, and we built and co-wrote this research uh, entitled um, "Mapping International Social and Solidarity Economy Mapping Exercises" with Colin Comper and Barbara Sack, uh, respectively, uh, CIRIEC documentalist and managing director of uh, CIRIEC International and CIRIEC Belgium. So, as you know, of course. Um, SSC can be or even should be uh, a response to, to, to many contemporary uh, societal challenges. And so without exhaustivity uh, in environmental protection or the fight against health disparities and equal opportunities or exclusion. However, and as Marie has just explained, and so I will therefore not dwell on it, even if it's recalled in the paper, there, 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 is, or, there, there, are, so there is a lot of debate and practices of SSC, huh? Marie just mentioned. And until recently, little effort was done to create uh, statistical data. Um, and Marie mentioned the different meetings that have uh, uh, that were 
in, uh, in, in, in Europe uh, uh, recently, and the different works of Marie and, and her co-authors arrive with, uh, to the conclusion that there is a need to clarify methodological challenges and to address them. And so we, we've just discussed about that. And so in our, our contributions uh, that we, uh, we were faced uh, with this observation and we wanted to construct uh, in order to construct um, this harmonized statistics, uh, the goal was to create a comprehensive review of literature, which was relevant to statistical methodology and statistical data under SSC. And so our output, it's this, let's say, first mapping, international SSC mapping exercises, and we focus on the more recent um, per period, so 2050-2020. So, Today, we will focus on the three last parts uh, of our research. And so I will present you quickly the three main uh, data collection methods, then how we could classify them according to specific characteristics. And of course, why these characteristics could be important and could be important, uh, especially for policymakers. And then I will present the limits of our exercise. And of course, uh, there, will, uh, there will be a call for new exercise of this kind after. So, after discussion between us, so the authors, uh, Marie and Gabriel, and the uh, UNRISD uh, project managers, we decided to divide the 30 mappings that we have discovered into three main types of uh, data collection. Uh, and this is already our first uh, and main classification characteristics. So the first one uh, is uh, administrative, legal, and institutional data containing uh, statistical information where we can identify an SSC population, and this is very important, in a representative way. And so that can be done thanks to survey based on a representative um, stratified sample if we do not have any access to uh, registers or to uh, legal data. And so we would just like to highlight the fact that these mappings lie often at the, the regional level. Uh, so for yeah. instance, yes? I think you do not move your slides. I think. Ah, uh, I think because from my in, from my perspective, I that moves, but perhaps. Uh, so uh, do, 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 let's me try perhaps to. Uh, stop, and I will try to share. Uh, I will share the integrality of my. So perhaps. Um, do you s and now? Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Okay, so I will. I will let it like this in order to perhaps even like this. Okay. So, uh, just I, I I just wanted to mention the fact that um, these mappings lie uh, often at the regional level. So, for instance, Sonia in Belgium or Quebec in Canada. And as it will be uh, shown later, uh, these regional and these uh, national initiatives, uh, we didn't take them into account uh, since we decided uh, together to focus on the international mappings. Uh, and so this is why they won't be present in uh, our 30 mappings uh, that you will could see in, in our annexes. So the second type of um, of uh, data collection is international research uh, on SSC, and we divided. We decided to divide this um, this this uh, second uh, data collection method in two uh, uh, in two in two uh, big categories. The first one is the um, studies who try to compare the different weight of SSC across countries. For instance, the size of economic and the social contribution. And the second one is, let's say, only, but it's not, of course, only the research who try, the international research who try to understand SSC as a whole or some uh, specific aspects of it. And so the first subtype uh, of studies is the literature of thinking to systematically review the analysis uh, of national uh, or representative uh, statistical information on SSC in different countries, but really with the idea of comparison. And the second subtype are the works uh, which focus on understanding SSC and its feature through a cross-country comparative study, but rather than the collection of perfectly representative uh, statistical information. And so finally, but we will focus on these two uh, first uh, data collection methods in the in the remain in the rest of the presentation. But there is a third one, uh, which is a thematic map 
and it's of course all often found uh, on, on the internet and such maps contain the information uh, collected or deposited by the SSC organization themselves and the goal is to visually depict uh, various aspects of uh, SSC so that could be done by sector, by geographical region or, or even by activities. Of course you have this kind of search filters uh, which are built uh, in these thematic maps in order to uh, help the readers to find the statistical information they seek. Okay, um, But as I told you, we will focus on the two first um, data collection methods uh, in, the, in the remaining of the presentation. And so I just presented the main characteristics, but now we could move to the seven other variables that we have uh, taken into account, that we have used for classification, uh, and we, I, will, I will present uh, them by enumerating quickly the what and the why that could be useful for a researcher, for a national or international institution, or simply someone who would like to know more about the, the, the SSC. And so, of course, uh, I will try to exemplify these characteristics for two specific mappings. So an important part of our work, let's say, uh, we could say the, the empirical part, uh, if we can call it like that, is the appendix, is the, is the annexes of our, our, our research that you could download uh, as Marie uh, showed you. Uh, and because in this uh, appendix, in this annex, for each mapping, we have, uh, we, have we have characterized each mapping according to the 7 plus 1 characteristic that I will uh, present you just now. So the first one, the time range, of course, we have temporality, we have information about data collection period, we have the information on periodicity. And why is it important? Because the policymakers could identify the most recent mappings and that could provide information on development and innovation in SSC. And for instance, describe the newcomers, uh, such as, and we have to, of course, discuss about that, as Marie mentioned, social enterprises or social business. Uh, as it would happen uh, last year. Okay, so uh, with respect to geographical scale and language, it's, qu it's quite obvious. So I skip them, and uh, I, I restart with the the, the fourth uh, characteristics, which is replicability. And in our sense, um, replicability means first of all the access to the author's methodology and the possibility of reproducing the exercise. And so, in fact, the majority of the mapping exercise. Uh, that we have in this paper, it's replicable in this sense. Secondly, uh, the, the second way we think about replicability, that means that we could have a consistency in numbers if we repeated this statistical accounting exercise. And so, for instance, but I will come back uh, with XM um, in 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 few minutes. In XM. Although there is no real accounting of the precise number of uh, a social enterprise and the respective weight or the respective size in the country, the methodology is well explained. And so you have the contribution of the country researcher and, uh, and then you, for the people who are in this conference, of course, they know the cluster creation from interviews in order to classify the social enterprises in the different countries. But by following the same methodology, the SSC statistics in other settings, for instance, and this number couldn't be produced. Okay, so the replicability variable provides policymakers with information. Why is it important? Because this replicative, this replicability sorry, variable provides uh, policymakers with information on methodologies that can be employed in different settings to produce statistics. With respect to the implementers, in reality, what we have seen what we have sh um, yes that we have seen is that the, the review of the mapping exercise that involves a mix of both public and non-state actors in terms of founding in terms of manpower data source or communication and so to highlight the, the source of the let's say let's say um, inte intellectual contribution uh, uh, to mapping exercise we decided to focus on the management of the, the, the mapping exercise and in particular research and that's quite important in, in order to 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 see if there is a, a possibility of continuity in the research. Uh, the sector of economic activity I skip, and so finally, but we just uh, debate uh, about that with Marie. So there was this this issue of scope, and with this issue of scope, we decided to try to uh, have a graphical representation of the thirty mappings in the delineation uh, that um, Marie has just presented just before, and so. 
as you can see, the mapping exercise have been uh, are indexed by the code, and so you have, of course, to see the annex for uh, be uh, for for knowing uh, which uh, mapping corresponds to uh, which uh, research. Let's say that, and so this is really the the first attempt to classify the different research efforts concerning the social economy, but in a broad sense. And this is the main, let's say, the main added value of this paper. Okay, so I give you some examples, and after that I will conclude. So, for instance, for S two, uh, so the first, um, so it's about uh, administrative, legal, and institutional data containing statistical information. Okay, uh, for S two, so social economy in the European Union, you have the publication date, the data collection period. You can see that it's uh, there is some periodicity in this research. The geographic scale, scale so Europe, the language. You have the scope, SSC, and the rep re replicability uh, column. You have the implementer, so it's Syriac and especially uh, Syriac Spain, and that covers all uh, activity at all economic activity sectors. What uh, do we observe? What do we get as results? For instance, for S2, so for social economy in the European Union, in Belgium, we can see that thanks to this survey, this, uh, this, this, uh, this, yes, this, this, this research, 9% uh, of the Paid jobs in Belgium are in the SSC. Okay, this is one of the examples, of course, one of the, um, the figures that we can find in this research. Another example, E2, we have already presented XM just before uh, in, the, in the presentation. Uh, we can see in the replicability column that we have the methodology, but we are not sure that we will have exactly the same results if uh, we reproduce the exercise. And this is research institutes and all economic sectors are covered. It's, I think, one shot exercise. And this is the kind of results that you can have. And so you can see that for the social business and cooperative, you have has a uh, most important social mission, ecology. For, of course, work into, uh, for work integration, uh, social enterprises, uh, the riser, of course, the employment generation is one of uh, the main uh, social mission. So what we have seen in this uh, research, what we have uh, observed, is that there is an absence of standardized statistical concept, perhaps uh, due to limited uh, human resource, perhaps due to volunteerism, and that this, this volunteerism lead to the absence of representative sample. And so we do not observe statistically robust results. But as we mentioned in the paper, this is not especially an issue because it's not the core objective. So our uh, little recommendation is that definitely more mapping exercises are needed and perhaps less Western-centered. So this is, that could be a first step. And uh, a second recommendation would be to have, but as, as Maria has mentioned, uh, some concerted effort of private and public sector actors and stakeholders on designing and implementing research that should be a crucial process, uh, which has to be prior to a, a comprehensive research and the production of statistics on a large scale. And so as a conclusion uh, slide, it's just the table of um, the descriptive results that we have uh, found in this research. What we can see is that the majority of the mappings uh, that we have reviewed are not statistical compilation made by a public body. That's already inter interesting to, to see. Uh, as we see in the table, uh, more than 50% are managed by research institutes or uh, teams. Uh, this also explains the high number of one-shot exercises. And finally, if you look at the data collection method, so the, the first um, categorization variable, we observe a relatively small number, so four out of uh, 30, of statistical uh, production exercise of real SSC measurement. That means collection of data with uh, the explicit purpose of counting the SSC organization and enterprises and so finally, measuring the rate of SFE within the economy. Okay, so I will uh, let you download if you are interested the different papers and I let the floor to Rafael. I think. Thank you, Jerome. Um, let's suppose uh, that you, happens to have, you happen to have a friend who is working at a statistical <laughs> office of the national yeah. government or local government. And your friend is interested in producing SSC statistics. And your friend asks you uh, about the materials, about mapping exercises of statistical uh, 
uh, exercises in different countries. I think this paper is the one you have to recommend your friend to read and uh, exactly. deliberate on. So uh, let's move on to our last speaker, Rafael Chavez, uh, who is going to talk about policy recommendations and future research on SSE statistics. Rafael, the floor is yours. Thank you, El Chong. I compare the screen, right? Yes, you can see it. Is this it? The screen is complete. Es este. Y ahora, si lo ves en PowerPoint, te saldrá. ¿Vale? Es este. Vale. Y lo pongo así, ¿verdad? ¿Lo ves ahora? ¿Está bien? Sí. One moment, please. Permitir. Le pongo permitir. Aquí. Permitir. Sí. Y ahora, ¿verdad? Ahora está mostrando tu pantalla. Y ahora se ve. Y lo, si la paso para adelante, se ve cómo van cambiando. De acuerdo. Well, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this uh, 18 uh, research conference of the MS uh, networks, uh, in particular to uh, Rocío Nogales to Mark Nissen, that is the, who is the president of, of MS, and of course, uh, Millán Díaz, who, who is the, the local organizer uh, of the University of Zaragoza. Uh, this conference takes place in Teruel, uh, which is this uh, year the capital of the social economy in, in Spain. It is a, a small town, uh, with the population problems and uh, it is a, a very big challenge to to attract uh, events uh, in the field of the social economy. Well, I would like also to thank uh, Ilchung and Vic van Buren for the chair of this uh, session and of course the opportunity to, uh, to explain this very interesting uh, project carried out by uh, the CIRIEC uh, and the UNRIS, the United Nations Research Institute for the Social Development. Uh, well, uh, in this uh, research conference of, of MS, in other plenaries, uh, there, there, there were a uh, translation into Spanish, and then uh, now we have only uh, uh, English, uh, an English session. Well, and then I will speak in, in, uh, in English. Well, my, my presentation is about the, the third uh, paper, the third uh, document that is the, uh, about the policy recommendation and direction for future research. Uh, I carried out with, uh, well, directly, uh, but with a very uh, big help of uh, most of it, of um, Marie Bouchard and, and Ilcho. Uh, in fact, this third uh, work, working paper is a guide uh, for governments and for researchers, for governments interested in developing uh, social economy statistics in their country and for the researchers uh, interested in working on improving and developing social and solidarity uh, statistics. Well, this presentation uh, is available in English and in Spanish. Uh, these, uh, these are the, the links for them. And of course, you have uh, the links and the, the, the two presentation, uh, the two uh, former presentation have uh, shown the links to access to the, to the documents in the UNRIS website. Well, about the, this paper, uh, the outline of it is uh, as following. First, we are talking about uh, why this kind of uh, so statistics are important. And second uh, point is which statistics on the social and solidarity are needed. The third uh, is about the entities, the entities that are involved in the production of these social and solidarity statistics. 
The, the fourth point is about the barriers in the production of the social and solidarity uh, statistics. The fifth is about the, the policy that, uh, uh, that need uh, the social and solidarity uh, statistics. And finally, the two last points are first, uh, policy recommendation to build this uh, statistic. And the, the last point is for the researcher, the future research agenda and action to improve this uh, statistic. Well, let's go with the first point, that is, why are social and solidarity statistics important? Well, the, 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 the more important uh, message is that uh, statistics are essential to guide the policy processes, making rational and evidence-based decision. Policy process for policy makers, but also for the actors of the uh, social and solidarity sector or movements. And the, why? Was because first, they help to make visible the social and solidarity area, to legitimize the social and solidarity as a new field of public action, and because they contribute in three, uh, in three ways the policies. First, to design the policy, I meant a promoting the social and solidarity uh, to a better implementation of these social uh, economic policies and to evaluate, to assess this policy by government, by the actors and the society uh, at the world. Uh, this importance uh, is recognized by several uh, bodies, by several governments, uh, by go bodies at national and international level. At the United Nations, and with bodies such as the UNRIS, the ILO, the United uh, Nations Task Force for the Social and Solidarity Economy, in the, all of this in the last years, for, for different uh, from different governments in uh, different con uh, continents, such as in Africa, in South America, and also in, in Europe, uh, near, uh, 11 uh, national governments have supported the, the importance of this statistic, but also uh, in Europe by different bodies, such as, such as the, the European Commission, the European Parliament, the Council of the European Union, and the, the group of experts in the uh, statements, in different official documents, they, uh, they, um, they recognize this, uh, the, the importance of this, uh, this uh, statistic. Well, I, I remember that uh, just two months before, in, in the last report of the General Secretary of the General Assembly of the United Nations, there is also a, a part, a point, uh, recognizing the importance of this, uh, these statistics uh, in general. Second point is about the, uh, about the, the, the statistics that are needed. Which statistics? Well, we, we can organize them in, in several groups. We have uh, chosen uh, this, uh, this way of organization. Uh, first, the uh, quantitative um, economic statistics on the social and solidarity within the framework of conventional economic aggregates and standard methodologies. The second is statistics that allow the quantification of the impact of the social and solidarity economy, not only in the economic field, but in the other social fields. And the third big group is the statistic allowing comparison at different levels and between social and solidarity, other economic entities such as with the for-profit entities. And the comparison also uh, in the time, uh, comparing, uh, for, for instance, uh, the contra-cyclical contra activity in the face of the crisis, for, for instance. In this picture, you can see some uh, other uh, kind of, uh, of aggregation and examples of the statistics are, that are needed. The third point is about the entities 
that should be involved in the production of these uh, statistics. Well, uh, perhaps we have in mind that the National Statistic Office has the monopoly of it, but not. Perhaps that should play a leading role or an important role, but they are not the only, uh, the only organization. Other are the government departments and agencies, for instance, the labor ministry that have a lot of uh, information, such as in, in Spain, for instance, the universities and other research centers, such as the CIEC International, for, for instance, representative social economy umbrella organizations at regional, national, and international level, and also uh, some development agencies and other non-government uh, uh, entities promoting the social and solidarity in, in developing countries. Uh, uh, all of them have their, their strengths and weaknesses in the production of this uh, statistic. And in, in this paper, we have de defended that uh, um, the, the activation of uh, statistical technical working groups, the collaboration among them can reduce the, the weaknesses uh, uh, of them. And in countries where some of them uh, and, uh, are inexistent, other can uh, carry the, the production of this uh, statistic in collaboration with the other. Fourth point is the barriers in the production, the main barrier in the production of the statistics. Well, in this, uh, in this slide, I have uh, chosen the, the five uh, main barriers. The first is uh, the technical barriers, technical that refer to the delimitation and definition of the field of the, of the, field of the statistical analysis. Uh, this problem, this technical problem is, is important, is very important uh, actually, uh, because the, the, there are tensions that blew the field of the social economy, such as uh, the, the paper of, uh, of Marie Bouchard, the first of, uh, of the, these uh, three papers, have uh, highlighted with the different concepts and visions about this field. Uh, and the second, uh, the second barrier linked to the technical barriers is uh, about the process of production, the technical process of production of, uh, of data from the system of raw data source, the, the process of processing and use the methodologies to, to produce aggregates, etc. The second barrier is about the skills, about the training, uh, about the training of the, 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 the people the, the, that, are, uh, that have to produce this, uh, this statistic. They, have, they need to have skills about precisely the concept, the delimitation, and the technical process of production, the methodology, the, stand, the standards of the, uh, of the statistic. The third barrier is uh, the institutional barrier related to the to the rules the, the existence of rules uh, of normative mandate to push government and statistical institute to undertake the statistical endeavor because if uh, we haven't we haven't got this uh, mandate it is very difficult uh, that with a very voluntary uh, will to uh, carry this kind of, of, uh, of statistic. And of course, to, uh, to institutionalize the standards uh, of the delimitation of the field, of the production of the, method of the methodology that need also the institutionalization. The fourth barrier is finance, uh, the finance, the funds, the, the lack of funds to carry statistics. Of course, as I said, uh, with uh, voluntarism, it is not possible to, to, to build the statistic. Then we need, we need uh, funds, uh, funds in, a, in, a, in an adequate way. And finally, the, the, the five and the fifth um, barrier, main uh, important barrier, is the policy support uh, from uh, or the lack of policy support from the social economy sector in itself. 
if it not recognize the importance uh, for um, their strategy, for uh, their actions, it is very. Uh, uh, the, uh, we have bar we have problems to to carry uh, this uh, statistic. And which uh, uh, what kinds of, of policy may the social and solidarity statistics support? Well, we can uh, we can aggregate that in, in really in two uh, two big groups. Uh, the first one is the policy that address directly the development of the social and solidarity economy. Then uh, they, uh, the statistic help the development in the social uh, solidarity economy in itself. And the other one are the, the policies and the general or sectoral policies uh, that uh, affect, that involve uh, families or subsector of the field of the social and solidarity. And we can aggregate this, this policy in two groups, the sectoral and redistributive policies, such as the agri-food policy, the financial policy, social and health services and other, and the other are the functional and territorial and environmental policies. All of them involve uh, groups of, of cooperatives, of families on, on, on of the social economy in the in, in these uh, in the objectives and in the instruments of this of this policy and of course mm, the, the statistics in all of them are important for the legitimation legitimacy legitimization design implementation and evaluation of these policies Finally, the sixth point is the recommendations. The recommendation first for the policymakers interested in the development of social uh, economy statistics, and the last point is the recommendation for the agenda of the research. Let's go with the first part: is the recommendation for the policymakers. Well, these rec this recommendations are very linked uh, to the barriers. Then the first, uh, the first recommendation is for the policymaker is to establish a regulatory framework for national statistic uh, organization and other statistic producers uh, to uh, to uh, to activate a mandate to build statistics. The second is uh, for the funds uh, to establish an adequate and stable funding for this social and solidarity statistic and the third link to the, the, the third barrier is uh, to set up a technical working group with a spread for from national statistic organization research institute user of statistic and mechanism of coordination with other one to uh, to improve the skills the relation of the people involved in the production of this uh, statistic. The other recommendation is uh, focused on the, the technical barriers, that is, in the, in the problem of the delimitation of the field, and then we need a, uh, we need a national strategy, a national stra uh, social and solidarity statistic strategy that include the methodology and guidelines to com and that concrete the perimeter of the social economy in the country and the vari variables, indicators, and other guidelines. That it, it should be explicit in this strategy. And, and after, we have other uh, elements uh, linked to the process of production. Uh, first, a diagnosis of the state of the statistic in the country, to set up a, a, that database of with uh, raw raw uh, uh, data, and after just after the production, to produce them regularly in an harmonized way and to publish them in an efficient uh, in an efficient way. And finally, uh, the areas of this agenda, of this research agenda, to improve the social and solidarity uh, statistic is uh, as following in the as, as shown in the slide first is to uh, to develop 
methodologies and guidelines to address the perimeter issues. This uh, area was very uh, well uh, highlighted by the two uh, former papers, the one of uh, Marie and the other by Jerome. The other is to improve the, the, the methodology for the systematic collection and organization uh, of, the, of this data. This is a problem of uh, the technology, the statistic technology, and also to develop variables, indicators for the assessment and of the values and performance of, of the social and solidarity uh, economy and visualization of its idiosyncrasy. Uh, to develop mechanism of performance and impact comparison between the social economy and uh, other uh, um, forms of entities, uh, to identify uh, the different ways of publishing statistics and ways of models of regulation uh, of the, the construction of the statistic and models of governance of the relation between the producers and the users uh, of the statistics of the, in, the, in the process of production of the statistics uh, in, in order to be more uh, efficient. Uh, of course, uh, to finish, uh, you have to remember, as the other papers have shown, that you can download the three study in the web page of the, uh, the UNISTED. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rafael. So uh, we have had uh, wonderful presentations of three papers produced by uh, yeah, three excellent scholars for this yeah, project. Maybe and uh, maybe I will open the floor. And if you have any questions or comments uh, for um, three presenters, maybe you can raise those questions and then maybe we can ask them to answer those questions. Um, I think you have a symbol uh, of hand at the bottom. And if you have any questions, you can raise, you can press on, you can click on that symbol. So um, we have question from Iran. Uh, so could you introduce yourself briefly and uh, raise your question, Iran, who is yours? Uh, good afternoon. I'm uh, Irene. I'm from Portugal, and uh, I study social entrepreneurship and social innovation in Portuguese context. And I'd like to know a little bit about uh, the uh, if you are considering the new um, the new indices that. Uh, researchers are looking for to overcome uh, the GDP dependence. If we are studying something broad, like a statistical database, if we are considering this new index that are still in, still in ongoing process. Thank you very much for that question. I mean, the uh, Irene asked about any research on the efforts to overcome GDP-centered statistics to measure economic relations and activities. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, Komite uh, has a question. So could you introduce yourself and raise your question? I will collect two or three questions first and then we can have a floor for uh, presenters. Comité? But the comité is Marie. Comité is Marie. <laughs> ah, really? Okay, so uh, if we do not have any more questions, maybe we can go to Marie or Raphael or Jerome. Okay, I will open the floor for presenters. So uh, Marie, you have answer to that question, right? So well, floor is yours, Marie. Yeah. <clears throat> not necessarily an answer to that excellent question. I think um, we are not the only ones asking ourselves this question. Um, just a short answer about the how to measure the GDP usually is to use the value added produced by the enterprises. 
And there is a problem with uh, measuring the contribution of the SSC to the value added because the value added is not positioned exactly in the same place in the accountancy of the firm. Uh, part of it has been pre-distributed to producers who bring their products to the cooperative or it's been redistributed to consumers through patronage refunds. Um, so if you look at uh, you know, the productivity or the um, value added of a cooperative, let's say, compared to a similar enterprise, you will not calculate it the same way. So there is a misrepresentation of the value added of the SSC entities inside the uh, global value added, which is the way to one, one of the ways to measure, measure the GDP. And of course, GDP in itself has a lot of problems, um, as we all know. I don't think that you can solve the problem by, uh, you know, just researching social and solidarity economy. But I think that researching social and solidarity economy might give good um, ideas uh, for, for the standards and statistics to include uh, different ways of measuring this, uh, this contribution. There is a discussion about this uh, measurement of economic contribution uh, of cooperatives in a in a, um, research that was conducted for the ILO on cooperatives, and that can be found on the website of Syriac. I will find it and put it in the chat for you to find. That would be my answer for now. Thank you very much. Rafael, Jerome, do you have anything to add? No? Within UN system, there is a group called uh, Alternative Economist Network. And um, they are talking about different alternative approaches in economics, like a proper economy, creative economy, social and solidarity economy, and circular economy. And one of the issues they are dealing with is to move away from GDP measures, because we know all those problems of GDP uh, like what um, Mary just mentioned and others can be, you know, uh, impossibility to measure all those non-economic activities with economic impact, like a domestic uh, labors within the household or whatever. So uh, there is a kind of discussion and it's, it's a long-standing discussion uh, in economics. So I think we have to make an effort to uh, systematically articulate all those different approaches to overcome um, GDP-centered uh, statistics and uh, assemble all those different brilliant ideas uh, to uh, make an alternative approach to GDP. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, do we have any other questions or comments? If not, I, I, I'd like to make very... Uh, okay, we have one question from Madita. Madita, floor is yours. Please introduce yourself briefly and Hello. write your question. Yeah, and can, can you see and hear me well? Yeah, I can see you and hear yeah, you clearly. Uh, so yeah, my name is Madita Rabe. I'm from uh, Kassel University International Center for Development and Decent Work. Um, I, I'm not sure if I made up my mind properly about my question, but um, I just, I'll, ch I'll try. Um, so, what I was wondering is, I mean, if we want to measure and uh, produce statistics about SSE, we need to be very precise about definitions and the definitions of SSE are quite contested. And I think, I mean, in the long run or even the short term, it does make a difference which conception of uh, SSE we're using. And I was wondering, since right now we're at the conjuncture somehow of mainstreaming SSE, I mean, the EU is involved, OECD is involved, UN is involved. So there are lots of actors involved right now in this process. And everyone is kind of, at least that is my impression, pushing for their own um, uh, or yeah, conception. I mean, theoretical conception of SSE. And I was just wondering whether you all, since you are all more in the field than I am as a student right now, could clarify a little bit, like, how is the discourse right now about this issue? And what are maybe the, the um, maybe the frontiers and so on? Because I think in the end, I mean, that will make difference what theoretical assumptions our statistics will be, be based on. Thank you very much. Marie, Marie, Raphael, Jerome. 
anybody who could yeah, answer that start, question? I can start. I'm sure Jerome and Raphael will have things to say as well. Um, thank you for this excellent question. Um, there, there are issues. There, there. It, it is a, a competition for definition, but uh, you can partly solve that uh, by an intellectual uh, work on, um, you know, what is consistent of these definitions. As I mentioned, there are, you know, two or three major streams uh, that identify what is the SSC. And uh, depending on which stream you are looking at, you will have a different definition and therefore a different perimeter of the SSC. What is what, what is more confusing? I, I mean, it's either a non-profit, you know, non-distribution version or it's a pre and redistribution limited profit version of the SSC um, in terms of statistics. Of course, I'm not talking about sociology or anthropology, but once you you um, you go over the border, uh, including social enterprises, which can be for profit uh, shareholders. Um, well, you, you introduce a confusion where, you know, you may lose the concept of the SSC at a certain point. Uh, everything will be SSC. And this is the big tension that we have to look at. Not so much amongst ourselves, uh, us promoters of the SSC, but um, between us, the promoters of the SSC or the, the ones, the actors, the sector of the SSC, and this new uh, trend, which uh, may lead to some... Um, uh, dilution of the concept of the SSE. It would be great if, while mainstreaming the SSE, it would mean that the whole of the economy would become more social and more solidarity-based. But it would, it would be a, a, a shame if, by mainstreaming the SSE, we would reduce the complexity of the SSE and make it so that it would be confusable with any type of capitalist organization that does pretend or does some social or environmental good at some point in its organizational life. I think that's the issue. Thank you very much, Marie. Jerome, Raphael, do you have anything to add? No? I think the conceptual issue is very interesting um, from the perspective of development. Um, UN is dealing with um, organizations on the ground and organizations on the ground, especially in developing countries, have very complicated forms sometimes. And it is not easy to tell whether it is SSE or for-profit. They have mixed, mixed nature. So to me, definition should be classified in different contexts. You have normative definition, you have practical or operational definition, and you have statistical definition. And of course, you have different members in different areas or arenas, I would say, because there is a struggle, there is a tension. So when you talk about normative definition of SSE, you have some focus on different aspects of SSE, its values, its principles, its memberships, and uh, rules and regulations about uh, distribution. When you have operational definition, you have different standards because by definition, operational definition is much more focused on operations on the ground. So it has much more willingness and intention to include or to steer organizations on the ground to the principles and values of SSE. And statistical definition, every country has different intention and will in terms of statistics of SSE organizations. Some countries would uh, want to include some social enterprises which have more profit-oriented intentions because of national strategy to expand uh, social and solidarity economy areas or boundaries. And some countries would have much more focus on cooperative nature of SSE because you know, mainstream economy is already dominated by uh, cooperatives like Valencia, no, in Barcelona or, you know, uh, those, those small, uh, uh, you know, big, big provinces in certain countries. So I, I would suggest, um, especially um, to those uh, scholars and students to 
classify different areas of definitions. When you deal with normative concepts, you have to deal with normative definitions and discourses in normative areas. And when you are engaging with actual organizations on the ground for development purpose, you have to have different standards. But in, in dealing with all these different dynamics and uh, uh, discourses in different areas, you have to know more about the differences between different definitions and uh, um, you know, lines delineating one from another. So I think our papers introduce all those different definitions and discourses, especially with a focus on statistical definition. So this is kind of a you know, remark from the perspective of practitioners uh, who are dealing with development issues on the ground, especially related to social and solidarity economy as an alternative economy to for-profit maximizing uh, neoliberal kind of economic discourses. Okay, uh, do we have any other questions? Now, if not, maybe I can go back to my lay person's question. Um, suppose you, you have a friend uh, who is at the top of policy making process in some countries and he or she wants to know more about other countries' examples especially a model case of statistical, uh, a statistical exercise of development in SSE area. And if she or he asks you to recommend just one country as a model, which country it would be and why? Uh, maybe let's go for uh, Jerome first. Jerome. Which country it would be as a model case of statistical development for SSE and why? Um, yes, but uh, I think that um, Marie has already mentioned the fact that uh, for the moment Portugal seems to, to, to work very well. And so uh, I would definitely recommend uh, this, this, this country. But uh, yes. Portugal. Yeah. Yes, Portugal, I think. I think okay. That. Rafael, do you agree? My vote is also for Portugal. <laughs> okay, great. And Marie already said Portugal. Okay, what would be the second second best? No, Marie. No. Okay, Marie, the floor is yours. Uh, it's a it's a strange question, but of course, um, if you have a country where there is a legislation on cooperatives, I would say just go with the legislation on cooperatives because that is the definition that you are going to be reporting on and you need to apply the definition the legal definition of cooperatives or of social economy if you have a legal framework so that you can apply it in the statistics the national statistics um the issue of, of having one best country is impossible because the world is made of so many different types of countries and the, um, the efforts in producing national statistics is, is not equal amongst countries. So it would be absurd to say to a country in Asia or in Africa or in Latin America somewhere to use the same framework as Portugal. First of all, Portugal did spend a lot of uh, resources in producing the satellite accounts. I am not even sure that in Portugal, you know, this is feasible on the long run or every five years. So the, 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 the question is more, if I would, uh, if you allow me to reformulate it, um, do you, can you do an inventory of the resources that are available in your country? Uh, the existing information about what is called social economy or what is called the type of economy that <laughs> Uh, is social and solidarity economy in your country and try to look at these resources and see if you can mobilize them, if you can trust them. 
And if you can mobilize them, and if there is a bit of seriousness, robustness in methodology, uh, still identify if there are failures in that methodology, in this robustness, so that you can say, to what extent can I trust these, these figures? Are they just indicative of, of a trend? Or are they precise enough that I can um, design public policy addressing a certain number of organizations with a certain weight or certain size? And that will be different from one country to another. I'd also say, mobilize the sector. The sector usually knows what's going on um, in their sector, and, and they will have different ways of, of identifying, measuring, calculating. But if you work with the sector, you may uh, foster, you may promote some harmonization of data so that you can eventually uh, accumulate. I would also say, well, work, work with UNRIS or work with researchers uh, somewhere else, basically in your country to start with, uh, so that you can get some help in identifying what is crucial in naming or identifying these entities. If in your country it's entrepreneurship because you need small producers to get together and to join into a cooperative so that they can uh, organize their production and get the, the most uh, wealth uh, redistributed in the territory, if that's important in your country, that's what you should be looking at. The basic thing that I'm saying and to conclude do not let an international organization tell you what to do. But do ask international organizations to help you um, organize your data. Uh, this is basically what I'm saying. They should, or international organizations should coordinate among each other and, and make it so that it's feasible inside countries to produce statistics on the SSC. That is a big challenge, but this is the challenge that is ahead of us. So do you mean that international organization does not have to have a standard? No, or standard? That's, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that they need to collaborate amongst each other so that the efforts can join and, and, and not produce different types of, of standards that are not compatible uh, or that do not take the other one into account. But by and, definition, I think the international standard should be... A, uniform standard, which should be followed by different countries to have global level data sets. Otherwise, you cannot compare different that's countries. What, that's what is the what? situation right now. You have yeah. different definitions of the SSC, which are included differently in different international standard frameworks. The well, TSC the, the handbook, problem is international the standards are multiple and they do not have uniform standard that is the problem no Not the they do have one. they do have they do have uniform standards which are the international and acknowledged standards for producing statistics that is standardized no, I, what I'm you don't have ssc yeah. statistics what you don't have is the definition of the ssc that is compatible you don't you don't grasp the same entities coming back to madita's uh, question you know how do you decide which entity you should include we believe, I believe, <laughs> I believe that it should be based on the legal definition of the country. And that's why Portugal is exemplary, because they were, they were supposed to use one framework and they said, no, we're going to use two frameworks. It's going to cost us more and we'll have to pay ourselves for it. But we're going to use two frameworks because the one that is proposed to us by an international regional organization does not fit our legal definition. And so that's why we're saying that frameworks cannot overpass legal definitions inside a country or even regional uh, definitions inside uh, an area of the world. Thank you very much. Very wise, wise answer to stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> um, the reason why I pose, uh, pose that stupid question is related to my job. Um, my job within UN system is translate academic knowledge into uh, policy relevant knowledge, which can be used by policymakers. As you know, policymakers do not like uh, one-handed economists because uh, that they like one-handed economists because if they have both hands, they always say like on the one hand, on the other hand, 
and you know uh, it confuses policymakers. So they like one-handed economists. That is uh, something very much relevant to my PP questions because they ask, uh, they don't ask about statistics or knowledges underpinning statistics or whatever. They ask, okay, which country is the model we have to follow? And they ask their staffs to research about that country. So uh, I, I assume that all those participants are from academics, uh, you know, academia or students or professors. And whenever you meet policymakers, whenever you have a discussion with policymakers, do not begin with theories and concepts. You have to start with empirical cases like, okay, the best country in the world is Portugal. And why? Because such and such. And then policymakers will link you to the stops and you can explain in more details to their stop, not policymakers, especially those guys at the top. So that is based on my experience and that is why I posed mm -hmm. stupid question like that. Okay, thank you very much for your participation. It was a small group, but this uh, session will be uh, published online and you can uh, recommend this session to your friend, especially policymaker friends. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, and Chung, for your Have a good evening. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.